Starting off today's show, I wanted to address a rumor that has been swirling around of late in the coaching ranks. And if you missed it, this past weekend, the USC Trojans, a team with lofty expectations coming into the season, they took on Stanford and they were a pretty big favorite going into this game at home by about 15 and a half points. They ended up losing the game by multiple touchdowns and that made USC fire their head coach Clay Helton and in the process opening up the first job this early in the football season. Now if you ask many people around college football they will tell you that they weren't shocked Clay Helton was gone especially based on what has happened over at USC for the past couple of years. They have been very frustrating in terms of the teams they've had. Clay Helton has done an okay job an okay recruiter but the bottom line is USC fans were tired of wanting Clay Helton out. It was only a matter of time. And Urban Meyer immediately, his name came into the news. And when it comes to Urban Meyer, the main reason I think he was mentioned in these rumors were really two factors. One, his history. Urban Meyer has been a coach that throughout his career, he's been known for turning around different programs. He did a great job at Bowling Green and at Utah and at Florida, obviously, winning multiple national championships there and Ohio State. And even though he's been really good at all those places, one thing always stays consistent. One thing always happens. He just flames out. He decides to leave. And it's weird because for a guy who has been such a great coach throughout his career, he hasn't really been able to stay in one place. And a lot of people go over the last couple of years since Urban Meyer left Ohio State have been asking themselves for such a elite head coach like Urban Meyer. He, to many people, is the best college football coach they've ever seen, minus Nick Saban. Like, he is a great college coach. He is a winner in college football. But a lot of people were wondering if he would ever consider the NFL. And when it comes to college coaches making the leap to the NFL, I feel like not a lot of people realize just how difficult of an adjustment this actually is. When you're a college coach, especially in Urban Meyer's case, where at Ohio State, Let's face the facts, right? This guy was king. He couldn't do anything wrong. He was the leader of a football program that just generated so much revenue for the school. He was the king. He was the guy there. And he could really do whatever he wanted when it came to the players and disciplining them if they did something wrong. He could do whatever he wanted. However, in the pros, it is a totally different animal when you have to go from the college ranks and the guy who is that big man on campus leading the way telling everyone what to do and now you are talking to professional athletes who in some cases are making just as much money as you and they have many things that they're doing off the field and family members to deal with and kids and literally everything in between it is very different to coach paid professionals and I wanted to give Urban Meyer the benefit of the doubt. Even though I had my doubts about him and the Jacksonville Jaguars going into the season, I said, okay, he has Trevor Lawrence, a guy who I, along with many other people, think is the best quarterback prospect we've ever witnessed. A lot of football fans uh, in my, close to my age range, Trevor Lawrence is an elite, elite elite talent and coming through the college ranks he was a guy if you remember his freshman year at Clemson he lit up Nick Saban and Alabama in the national championship game and really ever since then this guy rightfully so was labeled as the chosen one and and as a guy who whatever NFL team he went to he was going to be the savior and I still think Trevor Lawrence could be a really good player in this league even though he threw three interceptions and the Jaguars lost to a terrible terrible Houston Texan team in week one and I think when it comes to Urban Meyer and the Jaguars this is where my concerns start it wasn't a great offseason for Urban Meyer after he got the job immediately he hires that strength and conditioning coach from the University of Iowa who was known for being racist and hot-headed and he was a guy across league circles that was just like all right we can't hire this guy you have to know better than that so immediately boom that causes a big distraction 
for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Even recently, he came out saying that he was going to prioritize keeping uh, vaccinated players opposed to unvaccinated players, which we all get it. It's true. But, dude, like, what are you doing? You have to know better than that. You can't just be saying that. And when you combine that with everything in Jason LaConfora's report prior to Sunday's game that already Urban Meyer was out here threatening people's jobs on his staff and there was some disconnect between him and the people on his staff that already have NFL coaching experience. I'm not going to lie to you guys. That is a big red flag for me, especially also when you consider the history of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over the last 20 years, this team doesn't win, no matter who's the head coach, no matter who is the quarterback. Besides the one big Blake Bortles year, the Jaguars have been an all-out disaster in recent years, and having a college coach that you bring in from Ohio State, and once again, he was a great college coach, I just, the more I look at this situation... I don't know if Urban Meyer is the proper guy for Trevor Lawrence to go into the future with in Jacksonville. And look, is he going to USC? I don't think so. If you missed it, he came out right away uh, yesterday in his morning press conference and said, quote, there is no chance I go to USC. And I understand you could take that quote with a grain of salt because Urban Meyer has said plenty of times that there is no chance that he's leaving a certain job. And then what do you, what do you know? Next thing that happens, he's gone from Ohio State. He's gone from the University of Florida. But he has a four-year contract for a lot of money. I don't think he's going to USC. However, can I see him leaving the Jaguars after this season? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did anyone see this guy's body language on Sunday on the sidelines against the Houston Texans? I mean, first of all, the Jaguars didn't even come ready to play. And if you heard Trevor Lawrence in the post-game interview after the game, it almost seemed like he thought that the Jaguars were ready to play. If Urban Meyer had his Jaguars thinking that they were ready to play based on that game plan that they put out there on Sunday, if I'm the Jaguars, that is a huge, huge problem. And I'm not blaming it on Trevor Lawrence. He's a rookie. He's going to do whatever his coaches tell him to do. But the bottom line is, if the Jaguars coaches thought that those players were out there ready to win a football game on Sunday, that is a huge problem because they played the Houston Texans and had Tyrod Taylor out here looking like Deshaun Watson. That is a huge problem. And a quarter into Urban Meyer's NFL coaching career, not only were the Jaguars losing, they were down by two touchdowns against a team that many people expect to be the worst team in the NFL. And his body language was just terrible. It almost looked like right before the game, his dog had cancer or something. Like, it was that bad. And he just let David Culley, a guy who once again... The consensus opinion on him in the league is that he's a very nice guy and they're happy he's getting an opportunity to be a head coach. But let's face it, like he was the wide receiver coach in Kansas City. You remember that year where even though the Chiefs were able to make the playoffs, their uh, whole wide receiving core didn't have a passing uh, touchdown catch the whole season. They didn't have a touchdown reception the whole season. You guys remember who the Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver coach was that season. Yeah, it was David Culley, and he ran circles around Urban Meyer. Here's another thing. Look at Urban Meyer's staff. Do we know if these guys are good or not? The Jaguars' offensive coordinator is Daryl Bevel. Ask anyone in Seattle or Detroit what they think about him. His defensive coordinator is Todd Wash, who we don't really know much about, but... I watched his defense on Sunday against David Culley, and they got absolutely destroyed by the, uh, by the way, Todd Walsh is the former Jaguars defense coordinator. I'll give you guys uh, the proper name right now. Joe Cullen, that is the name of the Jaguars defensive coordinator. Like, he got abused by David Culley last week. Like, that is a huge problem. And this week, the Jaguars going into a game at home, yes, but against the Denver Broncos, and we saw what the Broncos were able to do on Sunday against the New York Giants. That was actually one of the better games that I've ever seen Teddy Bridgewater play. 
like Urban Meyer. We've seen this plenty of times in the NFL with guys like Bobby Petrino, even Nick Saban, a guy who many people consider to be the best coach in the history of college football. He couldn't handle the NFL. The two leagues are that different. It is that hard to win in the NFL, and you just have to have the right attitude with the right sense for these players. And look, the Jaguars are a team that won what? One football game last year, even though they did bring in a lot of talent to help improve their team this season. We all knew that the Jaguars, at most, were going to win, what, five to six games? The problem is you just didn't want to see them get absolutely destroyed and show really no hope like they did on Sunday against the Houston Texans. And when it comes to Trevor Lawrence, we saw this kid play in Clemson, and he was one of the best prospects we've ever seen. And for some reason, this past offseason, a common question when it comes to all of the rookie quarterbacks were, which one long term is going to have the best career and part of the reason why the NFL is so good is even though the quarterback position is the most important position in the league and I don't think you could win big time championships and Super Bowls if you don't have a quarterback that is at least willing to make some big time throws like you just don't have a chance and the Jaguars got the guy that many people predicted to be the next chosen one and the next big time quarterback in this league and still because their organization and whatever is around him is so bad it's not looking like they could take advantage of Trevor Lawrence at least to start and there's a reason why when asked which quarterback in this rookie class is going to have the best career and why a lot of people's answer and smartfully had to do with the situation around the quarterback and smartfully I just made up that word smartly I should say Um, It has to do with the situation around that quarterback. And we look at Trevor Lawrence, the situation around him, yeah, it's not good. There's a reason why no one is answering that question, Trevor Lawrence. And Trevor Lawrence just so happens to be the guy who we all declare the chosen one and the next big-time quarterback prospect during his days at Clemson. Urban Meyer and the Jaguars are in trouble. His body language was absolutely awful. And as we end this segment, and I look... At the Jacksonville Jaguars schedule, they have to host Denver. They have to host Arizona the next two games. Or they will, uh, yeah, they will host Denver and Arizona the next two games. Go to Cincinnati, host Tennessee, host Miami, go to Seattle. Like, are these the games that we think Urban Meyer is going to win? I'm not sure. Maybe the Falcons at home could be a win. And I'm not saying the Jaguars are going to go 0-17. But I will say, if I'm a Jaguars fan, there's no doubt about it. I am seriously panicking.